Well, here we are in the Guardian's lovely new offices. The venue has changed, but the state of the world economy really hasn't. Uh, I've got three or four minutes here to sum up everything that's happened in 2008, and that's going to be a tall order because it's been an event-packed year. A few people can really remember what really was going on at the start of the year. At the start of the year, the government was trying vainly to prevent Northern Rock from being taken into public ownership. That was in February, and we thought perhaps that was the peak of the crisis. A month later, the US Federal Reserve had to try and bail out Bear Stearns, one of the big investment banks on Wall Street. And again, people said, is this the end of the crisis? We had people like Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, the American Central Bank, saying he was sure the American economy wasn't going to go into recession. The Federal Reserve is not currently forecasting a recession. We are forecasting uh, slow growth. And we had a similar stream of people on this side of the Atlantic saying, saying the same sort of stuff. Alistair Darling in his first budget in March had some quite impressive looking forecasts for the UK economy in 2008, 2009. He's had to rip those forecasts up. There was a period during the, during the spring and summer when we thought that actually inflation rather than recession was going to be the big problem. At that time, the oil price kept going up and up and up. It got to $100 a barrel and it didn't stop. It got $120 a barrel. It didn't stop. Only when it got to close on to $150 a barrel in early July did the oil price stop rising. Every big increase in the oil price in the last 35 years has been associated with a recession and this was no different. Higher oil prices affected the real incomes of individuals and they made it much more difficult for central banks everywhere around the world to cut interest rates to head off the looming recession. And while all this was going on, the problems of the financial system were not going away. They'd bought a bit of time with Northern Rock and with Bear Stearns, but there were problems bubbling away beneath the surface, and they really erupted in September. When people came back from their holiday in the summer, there was mayhem in the financial markets. Banks seemed to go down like nine pins. It started with Lehman Brothers in mid-September when the American authorities decided not to save the bank. It went bust. You know, I never thought it would come to this. And all of a sudden, almost every other bank in town, both on Wall Street and in the city, looked to be vulnerable. Oh, terrible. Death. It's like a massive earthquake. I don't know if we'll get paid for, for, the, for this month. Uh, I've only been here a week, graduate scheme, and so my kind of career has been halted at the first hurdle. And there was a period um, in mid-October when there was real concern that the entire global financial system would implode, that everything was going belly up in a, in, in, a, in a very, very profound way. They're worried about their savings. They're worried about their jobs. They're worried about their houses. They're worried about their small businesses. And the House of Representatives must listen to these voices and get this bill passed so we can get about the business of restoring confidence. Now, as things stands in, in December, it looks as though that's, uh, that sort of doomsday option has been averted. Um, governments threw money at their banks. They threw capital at them to, to uh, give them some breathing space. They took them into public ownership. But while the emergency for the financial system appears to have abated over the last couple of months, the problems for the real economy have only just begun. It looks as though the world economy is going to have its first synchronised downturn since the early 1980s in 2009. Almost everywhere you look, there are signs of trouble. And the UK, unfortunately, is going to be one of the worst performing economies of all. Back in September, the consensus was that the UK would probably grow by about half a percent next year. Now most forecasts think it will contract by something like 2% with unemployment going up to something like 3 million, the sort of levels we last saw in the early 1990s. But we are not going to be alone. This is going to be a generalised downturn uh, with every part of the global economy from the big, rich economies of, of uh, Europe uh, and Asia uh, all the way down to the smallest emerging economies in Africa and Latin America affected by this.